Let's talk about some coaching today, but not necessarily about you becoming a coach. Rather, what about borrowing some skills from coaching? While becoming a coach requires a lot of dedication and a set of other skills that you might not necessarily want to tackle, there are three skills that I think everybody, coaches or not, can benefit from right now. So let's take a look at what they are. The utility of listening never fails, and I think um, listening is such an underrated skill set. Very few people seem to have it these days, and people cut you during meetings, and sometimes even you're now in those remote meetings where nobody turns the camera on, so you're also missing now the facial, the physical cues. So having a way of really paying attention to what is being said and what is also not being said, either through tone or other things, it's really important. Um, in plain and simple, it's through listening that we make sense of things. So let's take a look at a few tips to start listening more. Tip number one is that if you are in the position to do so, face your speaker and maintain eye contact with them. Tip number two also depends on the visual cues and says, you know, look for facial and postural changes while you talk to people. Sometimes they are simple, like when someone is smiling or when they are crossing their arms. Tip number three is so simple it hurts. Don't interrupt. Listening has a lot to do with just being silent. Tip number four is to show that you are listening. You know, give somebody a cue, like a nodding or giving some subtle indication that you were hearing the person without interrupting. That is also part of listening. The next coaching skill is refraining from giving advice. Giving less advice. We all come from different backgrounds and at some point in our lives we kind of accumulated a lot of learning and knowledge. It is totally fine. People will ask you for your opinion and for your advice on things. And when we give advice about our work, that is great and that is on point. But when people are really asking for advice about their problems in their lives, even professional lives, um, you know, I would definitely start practicing this skill a little bit more. Because here is the thing, the reality is that people only use the advice that they really like. They are kind of looking for sort of, you know, a confirmation of something that motivates them to go in a certain direction. And when things are really difficult in other people's lives and projects, while it seems, even from a good heart, very, very tempting that we give some advice on how they could get out of this, the reality is that we don't truly know what is best for them. They lack some of the context and we lack some of that even more because it's not our lives. And another important thing to remember about this not being our own lives is that we don't live the consequences of those choices that they will be making based on your advice. So here are some easy tactics for you to try. The first one is listen more. We just talked about it. So use those muscles because sometimes it's not even that we are asked the advice. We are sometimes proactively giving that advice when no one asked. The second thing is you could ask more questions. When we do that, the other person can then start seeing things a little bit more clearly and they will then start answering things for themselves. That's really powerful. The third thing is to just try and notice when you're going to give that advice. You just stop there, catch yourself. And you will notice because it's on the tip of your tongue. So just try that. Catch yourself and thank me later. And finally, the third skill I want to suggest is to learn how to ask more questions. We all could assume less and ask more. Some people will think that they don't look smart when they ask questions. Other people will totally over rotate and they get that coach thing, you know, when they read so many books and all they do is kind of like ask question on and on, no matter where they are, no matter who they are with. Asking more questions is definitely a positive, but great questions. They really come from a place of humility and genuine interest, curiosity, a positive curiosity towards others. So we're not here talking about those smart questions, kind of like a mic drop in the conversation. We are really um, thinking about 
uh, what really, uh, you know, what makes you come to that conclusion? What really motivates you? Or really asking people to investigate what kind of resources, what kind of contacts or things that they already have that they can leverage. That is pretty, pretty powerful if you start asking these questions to someone who is a little bit lost and in need of investigating how they can move forward. A while back, I wrote a blog post on opening questions and I'll link them down below. There's also a video that goes with it. So either you read or you watch definitely in the description or maybe in a card around here. But now let's look at two, what kind of tactics can we use to try and fortify the muscle of asking more and better questions? So here are three tips for you to attempt. The first one is when listening to someone else, think, if this was your problem, how would you like to feel after being asked the question? You see, because that is probably how you want to make the other person feel as well. So from the question that you choose to the intonation that you use, work your way to get there. The second is giving time for an answer to come. Some people are fast thinkers and they assume the other person will think fast as well when they are asked the question. But not only we are not all fast thinkers, I most definitely am not. Um, in fact, you know, slow thinking is for everybody a great indication that the question landed deeper and that the solutions and the ideas that will come off are better ones. Number three, simple is best. Don't dump your thinking patterns on the other person. If you have a question to ask, let it be short and simple. Ask it. And if the other person needs clarification, they will ask back. So there is an added bonus of cultivating those three skills that you borrow from coaching. There's a fourth one, which is presence, cultivating presence. And it's so important and it's such a complex skill, completely dependent on the three others that I just mentioned. This presence, the art of just being, holding the space for the other person, it comes from a place of listening without judging. It comes from a place of slow pace, asking simple questions, letting silence be, and just the fact that you become more of a curious person than a fixer. Now, don't get me wrong, we all love solving problems, but it's also amazing to help people develop their own autonomy. And sometimes it's even simpler. It's just about getting out of the way when people are trying to exercise their own autonomy. So I hope this video was useful. You know, you ended up having four skills instead of just three that you could be developing right now to improve your collaboration and your working with others. No matter your position in the hierarchy, those skills are really, really important to have. I'll stop right here in this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.